Hey guys, today we're gonna be talking about shimmer reverb for worship music. Now, when we talk about shimmer reverb, we have to bring up this guy, the Strymon Big Sky Reverb. This pedal exploded onto the market maybe eight or nine years ago, instantly showed up on thousands and thousands of worship guitarists, pedal boards, and in tons of worship keys rigs. Now the shimmer reverb algorithm in this pedal sounds amazing. At this point, it might even be a cliche, but the sound persists and it's really awesome. So today I'm gonna to teach you how to get this sound without having to use this expensive pedal. I'm gonna teach you how to get a great shimmer reverb effect inside of Main Stage 3 using only the stock plugins. Let's check it out. Hey guys, I'm David from Sunday Sounds, where our focus is empowering worship keys players to sound amazing live in Main Stage and Ableton Live. If you're a worship keys player or the worship leader at your church, go ahead and subscribe to the channel because we put out a new worship keys tutorial every single week to help you level up your keys rig. Now today we're gonna to be working inside of Main Stage 3. I've got Main Stage open and I'm gonna show you simple ways to set up a shimmer reverb bus inside of Main Stage 3. Now obviously you could use an effects pedal and run your computer rig into hardware. There's also great third party plugins like Valhalla Shimmer that can give you a great shimmer reverb inside of your DAW or your performance software. But today, I'm gonna to teach you how to get a great shimmer sound using only stock Main Stage 3 instruments and effects. Okay, so let's dive into Main Stage. Now I have the Keyboard Minimalist Main Stage Concert open. Our Sunday Keys Main Stage template comes with a built-in shimmer reverb out of the box, but I didn't wanna start there today. I wanna to teach you that you can do this inside of any Main Stage Concert even if you don't have Sunday keys. So I have two basic patches open here. These are both EXS24 patches. This is the basic pad. And then we have the Steinway piano. These are both stock factory presets and I only made changes to the volume of these two patches so that they sound similar to each other. Okay, so there's several different ways that you can create a shimmer reverb sound in main stage. The most important thing to figure out is where you want to place the shimmer effect. Now for most effects like delays, reverb, compression, things like that, I tend to favor adding those audio effects to specific channel strips within a patch. But a shimmer reverb bus is kind of the one exception that I regularly find myself making. I like to put a shimmer reverb bus at the concert level, and then I can run any pad, piano, whatever I'd like into that bus. So we're gonna click on the concert level. The first thing I'm gonna do is just delete all of these existing effect buses. These uh, come stock in the keyboard minimalist uh, concert file. We just don't need them. So now I'm gonna add an aux bus here, and I'm just gonna make it bus one. It does not matter which bus it is, so if you've already got some, you can just add it to the next logically numbered bus. Okay, so now we have aux one added right here. Let's go back to our basic pad, and I'm gonna go ahead here and click where it says send, and choose bus one, and you can see that arrow says aux one, so it's gonna send it to that aux that we added at the concert level. Once we do that now, here at the patch level, I can actually see that concert level bus. I'm gonna double click on it and just name it Shimmer, and you can change the color if you'd like. I will make it purple, just so that it stands out a little bit from this um, instrument channel strip here. So again, this is the pad sound. Okay, so now when I increase the amount of this send, more and more of the channel strip sound is gonna be sent to that concert level bus. Now right now, because there are no audio effects on the bus, it just increases the volume of the sound overall because it's essentially being doubled. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and add some effects to this aux bus to give it a shimmer reverb sound. So there's a few components that make up a shimmer reverb bus. Now, this is not a hard and fast rule, but this is how I'd recommend you start. You want to diffuse or spread out the sound using a big, super lush reverb. Then you need to pitch shift those reverb reflections, and then you wanna spread out that pitch shifted sound again. So reverb into a pitch shifter, into another reverb. And then if you wanna further spatialize or spread things out, then you can go crazy adding 
extra delays, you can add chorus modulation, and it's a good idea to add some EQ as well. So we're gonna just dive right in here. The first thing I'm gonna do is add an instance of Silver Verb. So if you're not familiar, go down to Reverb here and choose Silver Verb. This is what that plugin looks like. Now, because we are on an aux bus, we don't want any of the dry signal to pass through here necessarily. We just wanna hear the output of that reverb. So we want the wet amount here up. So now we are just hearing the reverb effect alone, none of the dry signal. And the default settings inside of the Silver Verb Reverb plugin that you see here are actually pretty darn close to where we want them to be. The only thing I'm gonna do is increase the low cut so we don't get a bunch of bass through because shimmer bass just doesn't really sound right. It gets pretty boomy pretty fast. I'm gonna bring up the high cut here. Let's see, we may end up dialing that back. And then the most important thing I'm gonna tweak here is the modulation. I'm gonna bring the modulation rate up past one hertz, which is a little bit more aggressive modulation. And I'm gonna bring the intensity up to about 0.6. So the modulation section of Silververb adds a chorus effect to the sound. This really spreads things out. It spreads things out in terms of pitch, but also just sonically, it sort of makes the reverb sound more dense, more lush, which is what Shimmer Reverb is really all about, that big sort of angelic feeling. Okay, so there's our first effect. I'll bypass it. That's what it sounds like on its own or with the reverb off. And then here's after we've added the reverb. Okay, the next thing we're gonna add is some pitch shifting. Now there's two plugins that you can achieve that are stock to main stage to do this. The first is under pitch, and that is the pitch shifter plugin, and we will start with that one. Okay, this is the pitch shifter plugin. By default, it's gonna shift up seven semitones at 25% mix, and that's gonna sound really nasty. Not necessarily nasty, but it's definitely not the shimmer effect that we're going for. So if we turn the mix up, we can hear just the pitch shifted signal. So it's shifting everything up seven semitones. So what we wanna do is increase this to an octave because inside of the Strymon Big Sky and many other shimmer effects, the default shimmer reverb is achieved by taking the reverb signal and shifting it up a full octave. So that would be 12 semitones here. Now, this sounds really grungy on its own and that's because the mix percentage is at 100%. I'm gonna bring this mix down so it's more subtle and we don't notice those glitchy pitch shifting artifacts. Okay, so now you can still hear that pitch shifting sort of gargly, glitchy sound, but it's not nearly as noticeable when we bring that mix amount down, but we're not done yet. One more thing I'm gonna do here in the pitch shifting plugin is change the timing to manual. I recommend setting the delay in milliseconds all the way to the right to 60 milliseconds and then the crossfade to about 50% to give you good results without too much artifacting going on in the pitch shifting. So again, here is the mix at 100. Depending on how intense you want this effect to be, you can go as subtle as 10 or 15% up to 40 or 45%. Any more than that and those artifacts really start to come through pretty strong. So I recommend for this effect, let's start at about 30. Okay, so now we're gonna add another reverb after the pitch shifting to sort of wash out and cover up all of those pitch shifting artifacts that we're hearing now. So I'm gonna click here, go down to reverb, and add another instance of Silver Verb. Now, you don't have to use the Silver Verb Reverb plugin for this. We recommend not using Space Designer for live performance because it's pretty CPU intense, and I kind of shy away from Chroma Verb for that same reason. You can get this effect with Silver Verb. Really, any reverb plugin that can give you a modulated reverb sound will do. Silver Verb is very lightweight from a CPU perspective, so I really like using it. All right, here's our second reverb plugin. Again, we're gonna bring the wet amount up to 100, but this time we're also gonna bring the dry amount up a little bit. So we're getting some of that initial reverb sound through the, sh through the pitch shifting and then directly out, rather than just the wet signal of this second reverb. Okay, now again, I'm gonna add some modulation here, but at about half the rate of the first reverb's modulation. Otherwise, it's just a little bit too soupy, a little bit too chorused out. And then here we can play with the high cut to shape the character of the shimmer reverb effect. So as we increase the high cut, the sound's gonna get brighter. As we bring it down, 
the sound's gonna get darker. So you can dial that into taste. And then you can also mess in the second reverb with the size. So larger sizes are gonna last longer, they're gonna feel more dense. And that plays hand in hand with the density and time. So you can go up if you want this reverb to be just absolutely huge. Okay, so we now have a really cool, super lush, shimmer reverb sound. Let me go ahead and turn all of these off. This is where we started. This is where we're at now. This is just the shimmer sound alone. So now I'm gonna turn off soloing. I'm gonna bring down the volume of the shimmer a little bit. Let's go down to negative six or so. So now we have our original sound and then that shimmer in the background. There's the shimmer alone and our original signal again. So you can dial this into taste so that shimmer is as prominent or as subtle as you need it to be. So it's a really, really lush, super big sound. Now, there's some ways that you can sort of dial this in to, to fit your specific purpose. If you plan on making more frequent chord changes in a song, it's not a bad idea to decrease the size and the density of the reverbs so that that shimmer doesn't last over long. If you're making lots of chord changes, the shimmer essentially will not keep up, and that can lead to sort of a muddy, overly washed out shimmer reverb effect. I recommend in Silververb that you don't bring the density much below 75% or so. If you need the reverb to feel smaller, do that with the size knob here. And you can also do that to some extent by decreasing the reflectivity. Okay, let's bring this back in here then. Now, if you want more fine-tuned control over the voice or the timbre of your shimmer, you can add an EQ effect into the shimmer bus. Let's go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna go down here to EQ and choose Channel EQ. This is my default preset. Yours might not look exactly the same, but you can just use the frequency analyzer here to identify any areas where frequency buildup is an issue, and then you can dial those in with a little bit more fine-tuned control. So for me, I might want to stay out of the way of the vocals a little bit, so I might do a moderate cut here around 2K. And then that lets me increase the volume of the shimmer effect without taking up too much of the frequency space commonly occupied by the vocalist or the lead instrument. I could also use this as sort of a secondary tone control. If I wanted to, I could sort of shelf those highs out to make the shimmer a little bit less prominent, or if I really needed it to cut through, I could increase the brightness there as well. I might apply just a really subtle cut, let's say about 5K there. And I think this is really a nicely dialed in shimmer effect. Okay, so let's go to this piano now, and we're just going to add this shimmer effect to it. So all we have to do is click the sends area and then choose our shimmer bus and then increase the amount of that send to taste. So it's really pretty much just ready to go out of the box. Now I might go ahead and make this shimmer reverb a little bit bigger again especially since the piano does not sustain infinitely. Let's go ahead and try that on. Nice. Super cool, super versatile. It really can function as sort of a pad underneath your piano playing, but it also does a lot to enhance an existing pad sound. Now, a little bit earlier, I said that you can go as wild as you want to sort of customize this shimmer effect. 
because you're doing it inside of software. So first off, I wanna show you a second pitch plugin that you have available to you that gives you a slightly different feel for the shimmer reverb itself. So I'm going to go back and mute the shimmer bus, and then I'm gonna replace this instance of the pitch shifter plugin. So I'm gonna click on the pitch shifter, then I'm gonna go down to audio units, choose Apple, and then go down here to AU pitch. This is one of the stock Apple audio units that comes on all Mac computers. I actually love this pitch shifting plugin. I prefer it to the pitch shifter in main stage for a lot of pitch shifting applications, and it has a different flavor when you use it in a shimmer bus. Okay, so the effects here are pretty similar. I recommend turning smoothness all the way up, tightness pretty much all the way down. We're gonna bring the effect blend to about 30, uh, 30 or 40%, we'll go in the middle. And then here in this plugin, your pitch shifting is done in terms of cents. So 1200 cents up, would give us a full octave of pitch shifting. So there it is bypassed. And there it is turned on. I'll bring the effect all the way up. So to my ear, this is actually a little bit more musical of a pitch shifting effect. There's not quite as many artifacts as the pitch shifting plugin that comes in main stage, which is a little bit easier to find. So I really love this AU pitch plugin. And inside of AU Pitch, you can go up to two octaves, which is something you can do on the Strymon Big Sky as well. That's not possible in the stock pitch shifting plugin. I'm gonna bring this back down to 1200. Okay, then I'll turn on the second reverb again so you can hear the effect. Okay, so it's super lush. I think a little bit easier on the ears than the stock pitch shifting plugin. Last thing I'm gonna do, let's spatialize this or spread it out in the frequency or the stereo field a little bit more by adding an instance of stereo delay. So I'm gonna add an effect after my EQ and we're gonna choose stereo delay from the drop down here. Now here, how you wanna set this up depends on the type of sound that you're using, whether it is percussive or not. Right out of the box, the mix is gonna be set to 100% for both the left and the right because main stage knows you're on an aux bus. So I don't recommend staying there. I'd recommend going for something more subtle, like 20 to 30% somewhere in that ballpark. And then you also have independent low and high cut for both the left and right delay repeats. So you can use this again to just cut problem frequencies or to just dial in the voice of the delay. So for me here, I don't really necessarily want the whole shimmer reverb delayed over and over left and right Let's just accent sort of two specific little frequency ranges, one in the left and then one in the right. Now I'm also going to bring down the feedback amount here and then add some cross feeding. This is going to actually bounce both delays back and forth from left to right in the output. So it's a subtle difference that just sort of adds a little bit of extra separation to the sound. So here it is with the delay off. It's pretty constant. And then when you bring that stereo delay in, it sort of just further spreads everything out. And it sort of jumps back and forth in the stereo field just a little bit. Now, if you wanted to achieve an even more dramatic sense of movement, you could also go to modulation here and add an instance of the tremolo plugin but I'm gonna stop here for today's tutorial. Let me show you how this delayed spread out shimmer sounds on this piano. Then the last thing I'm gonna do is just select both patches. I'll do a new patch from selected patches so you can hear piano and pad together, both featuring this shimmer reverb. So that right there is a patch that could get you through pretty much any worship set in a pinch. Just having shimmer available for your pads and pianos is a great tool to get in your tool belt. 
So you can follow the steps I've laid out in this tutorial to build your own shimmer bus and you can go crazy customizing it as you'd like. Or if you'd like a done for you solution, then I'll put a link in the description of this video to our Sunday Keys template for main stage, which comes with hundreds of ready to play worship patches, along with a really amazing built in shimmer reverb effect that you can add to pianos and pads with pre-programmed modifier control. So if you need a way to sound amazing in main stage that's done for you and ready to play right out of the box, click the link in the description to learn more about Sunday Keys. Lastly, if you're a main stage user, I've got a couple of other free resources we will also link in the description. Check out our free main stage basics course, which is a free five video course that walks you through A to Z of setting up a worship keys rig in main stage. And we give out a free main stage worship patch every week in our newsletter. So there will be a link to download all of our free main stage patches as well. I hope that this tutorial was helpful to you. Uh, if you have a Strymon Big Sky, go ahead and give recreating this effect inside of main stage a try. Or if you have any other tips and tricks on how you like to dial in shimmer reverb in main stage, we'd love to hear from you in the comments. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.